Welcome back. This is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today, we're going to talk about tomatoes and lycopene. So let's get right into it. What are the dosages? What are the benefits? What are the studies? Okay. Tomato and lycopene. It's a non-provitamin A carotenoid responsible for the red and pink colors of uh, fruits and veggies. So tomatoes, pink grapefruit, watermelon, papaya, and there's another fruit called gak fruit, which is more of like an Asian fruit. It's kind of spiny on the outside, but it actually has the highest levels of lycopene. Antioxidant used in a variety of different conditions. So the main uses would be an antioxidant, it has a significant cardiometabolic or cardiovascular effect, infertility, and prostate health. The studies have been done on benign prosthetic hyperplasia or hypertrophy, cardiovascular disease, exercise-induced asthma, hypertension, male infertility, submucosal fibro fibrosis, osteoporosis, type 2 diabetes. So it has a lot of profound effects in the cardiovascular system and the antioxidant effects. <clears throat> Side effects, very minimal, if any. Anywhere they've used 75 to 120 uh, milligrams of lycopene without many side effects. Sometimes you can get a skin allergic reaction or skin irritation. Not a big deal, typically. Now, <clears throat> when we look at lycopene, there are different forms on the market that are utilized by different uh, supplement companies. So let's get right into that one. So different forms. There is something called lactolycopene, but it's also uh, tied to whey. So if you have issues with milk protein, uh, it's one to avoid. There's something called lycomatic, which is actually the natural form uh, from tomatoes. And then you have lycovite and uh, red in vivo. These two are actually synthetic. So if you had to choose the form in here, I would tr choose lycomatic, or you can use natural uh, tomato paste extracts to extract the lycopene and use those types of supplements. Now, <clears throat> when we look at absorption, there is 10 to 30% of oral uh, absorption. So when you take it in oral intake, it, 10 to 30% will be um, absorbed. It's best to take with fats like olive oil, coconut oil, or avocado, or something fatty, um, because it is a, 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 a vitamin A family, right? <clears throat> Six milligram absorption rate, typically. So when you dose and you take 10 to 120 milligrams, uh, the saturation rate uh, is kind of low. So if about six milligrams are going to be absorbed into the system. So you probably want to be, uh, take it in, uh, in smaller doses more frequently. Highest concentration distribution in the body. It's in the testes first, adrenals, ovaries, placenta, kidney, prostate, and brain. Highest to lowest, okay? Half-life, two to three days. So when you take the uh, lycopene, the half-life is two to three days. Now, you can also make tomato paste, right? You have tomato paste, you put, let's say you drizzle olive oil in it, a uh, little basil, because basil also has some lycopene in it. <clears throat> and there's your formula for increasing antioxidant effects with lycopene. Now, cooking basically tomatoes activates the lycopene. So tomato paste, when you heat it up, you're gonna have a, a better absorption rate, up to three to four times uh, in terms of absorption. So that's another good way to increase lycopene in our diet. Unless you have allergies to tomatoes, right? There are people who have issues with tomatoes. Um, so you have to be careful about that. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on The Healthy Side. Have an awesome day.